Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, this weekend, I had uh, an extra set of hands named Parker, who came and helped me get uh, get a bunch more of the uh, urethane done. So we've got the first coat on all of this uh, structure, and the whole front of the fuselage. Not not the bottom yet, but um, the top, the sides. Uh, we got most of most of this area in the front here um, done and I, I've finished the instrument panel actually that's got that's been sanded a couple of times and has all of the final coats on it I was planning to paint this but I'm debating I will uh, be interested to um, to see your comments as uh, maybe leaving this mahogany since the whole interior um, of the fuselage is also mahogany. Um, it might actually look, uh, it might look really nice and it does sort of, it does have that vintage look and feel. I'll definitely paint the, paint the top um, and uh, the back panel probably, I'll probably paint that as well. It's certainly a beautiful piece of wood, but, um, and maybe just leave the, leave this part, the front of it mahogany but uh, anyway that looks really good I still have to do the bottom of that then I've got the landing gear legs can be done now the seat can be done the rudder pedals the floorboard um, those are all ready and uh, all the tail feathers are ready so I could do all of that and um, I have more than enough to urethane had to grab my respirator because when I get up in this forward area, uh, forward of here, that has plenty of, uh, well, I'm just gonna need it. <laughs> so I'll, uh, uh, even just leaning over and doing this portion here, I really could have used it uh, for that, but, but I got through that okay. So, so once I get that done and then the, uh, the bottom done, Maybe I did, actually I did do the bottom. Um, now that I think about it, the bottom is actually done. So so all that's left with this first thin coat is the, uh, the very forward section here. So I'll flip this over on its side and I'll be able to get in there and do um, all of that. I did notice as I was doing this that I forgot um, to actually the very bottom plywood piece right here. I didn't actually get that smoothed out to the uh, to the former so I got to take the file to that and, and redo that. So that is no sweat there. No sweat to get that taken care of. Um, other than that, like I said before, I'll just hit the uh, I'll just hit the areas where the fabric's gonna go uh, with some sandpaper. Um, before I put the second coat on, the full strength coat. And uh, interior, I'm not concerned about, I'm not concerned about all these uh, stringers and stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna get uh, set up here and uh, we'll get some of this, uh, some of this knocked out, so. Oh, I was gonna show you the, I was really happy with the way the step insert came out. It actually is really neat to, installation both inside and out you can't really see it very well here uh, crazy solid um, nice fit um, so I'm uh, was really really happy with uh, how all that worked out so um, okay let's get this flipped over probably need the vacuum get a little bit of this uh, might be a little dust in that forward area we'll get that out and we'll get some urethane going all right All right, so I got that. Uh, I got that all that inside finished up here with this first first coat. So you can see all that in there. Um, it's all looking really good. So now I'm going to clean off my table and uh, we'll get that. Uh, 
We'll get that. Let's get the table cleaned off. And then I'm going to start uh, putting urethane on some of these other components. All right. All right, so I got stuff ready to uh, ready to put uh, urethane on, and I've got the gear legs too, uh, but I'll just save those until I get this done, and I'll do that. So uh, let me get uh, let me get my can over here, get some gloves on, and uh, we'll have at this. All right, so I took some uh, 220 grit sandpaper and uh, just um, sanded um, the first thin coat kind of raises the grain and uh, so I, I dusted it off after I sanded it um, but I used uh, some 220 and just kind of smoothed it out and when you run your hand over it you can really feel a difference between this that's not sanded and this that is just gets the high spots, smooths it out, um, and uh, now I'll come back and uh, I'll do a uh, I'll do a full strength coat of uh, urethane, and this will be the this will be the final coat. And once you uh, once you start putting it on, um, you can tell right away um, the difference. And that second coat goes on so much easier because there's no, uh, there's, it's just smoother, the surface is smoother, and so it lays down really nice. So it'll, it'll actually go quicker than the, than the first coat. Yeah, man, that's looking good, so. All right, I'm going to continue on with this uh, with this side here, and uh, yeah, well, uh, hopefully uh, we won't have too many more videos of polyurethane. I know it's boring, um, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. Um, no reason to leave it out. We're showing everything else, so um, yeah. All right, cool. Well, we got the second coat on all of that which uh, after that little bit of sanding looks really, really good. So that's, uh, and that's just the, it's just on the side where the fabric's gonna go all the way back. Once I get this exterior uh, done and a second coat on the interior, then I'll come back and do these, uh, hit these one more time. Um, all of these members here. And they just need a, they just need a good second coat on them so and then as you saw we got these parts one-sided uh painted instrument panel of course you saw that that's painted and we got the headrest first coat on that so these are all first coat 
probably put three coats on the floor, um, especially on the feet side. And uh, on the pedals, probably do the same. So, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I do appreciate it. And uh, before I go, I was just going to show you just a little bit of um, a little bit of Zach's uh, airplane here. There are some uh, really interesting design features um, about this plane that I didn't realize, um, and that's that the uh, the flapper on um, this whole is a, the whole thing's a flapper on. There's a different incidence of the aileron of the. Let me say that again. There's a different incidence of the outer portion of the flapper on than the inner portion, as, as you could see right here. And I never realized that. I mean, I'd seen these in video and stuff, but I never really recognized that particular feature, which I think is um, I think is pretty cool. That gets the. I mean, you got the wing stalling um, at two different uh, uh, when one section is stalling, the other one's not. Um, super cool. I didn't realize that they had an inverted stab, which they do. And uh, I have to say that, uh, I mean, Zach has done an incredible job um, with this airplane. And uh, I notice he has his, his engine uncovered today, so we can just get a quick look at it. We won't touch anything, of course. Um, uh, but we'll walk around here. <clears throat> So what he's been working on lately is he's been working on just checking his aileron travel, making sure both sides are equal and in spec. And uh, I don't know if today, if he got to the point where he was checking his flaperons um, or not uh, to see how they were deflecting. But the last time I saw him, he was working on, uh, working on his ailerons. So he's got a lot going on in here. Um, there are, I don't know if you can see them back in there where those curved slots are, but that's where the, uh, uh, threaded rod goes up, uh, from a, uh, link to a link. And, uh, so he's been, uh, working on that. He's got his instrument panel, um, in really good shape. He's just waiting to get this forward part on so he can, uh, move on to that. <clears throat> he built a Corvair, which is just a beautiful, uh, beautiful engine here. <clears throat> and I uh, believe that uh, Zach said that he actually went to one of the Corvair colleges, which I know they're not even doing anymore. I think you have to go to William Wynn's uh, place in Florida and actually build it in his shop, but with some assistance. But this is, uh, this is Zach's engine. Um, which, which is amazing <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he's done everything exactly according to the way that you're supposed to but extremely clean I mean everything is just well organized and um, super clean uh, super clean job there so that's uh, that's where Zach is at with his plane there is a uh, I'll just see if I can show you a couple more. There's a Thorpe over here um, that is nearly nearly complete. Uh, the wings are right here. And uh, this was the... I don't know if this was a kit version of the Thorpe or if it was um, a uh, production airplane. But I'm sure if we could find the uh, data plate, we'd be able to figure that out. But... I see some panel work going on here, and uh, um, the engine, which I'm not completely sure what engine this is, because I can't even read the really read the plate on it. Um, but anyway, that's the wings, landing gear. So that plane could be flyable, I think, pretty quickly. I'm just looking around it to see if I can find a data plate. And I don't see one, so yeah. Um, this plane over here, which has been here for quite some time, I believe, it's, it's a Star Duster II. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. It's kind of a little bit dark in here right now, but this is a uh, 
Starduster. And I don't know what the status of this one is. It appears to be in storage. Um, this plane I am not familiar with. Maybe some of you might be. Uh, it uh, has its wings over there. Let's see if we can, I don't know if we can find out something about this one or not, but it doesn't look like it's made any progress in a while um, as well, but uh, there she is nonetheless. This plane, I well, this is a BT-13. I think I showed you this before. Um, I don't see the wing tips in here. I only see the wings up to this point. Uh, but it's really cool to it's really cool to walk around and look at this one, and not a lot has changed. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's really neat to see it and think about. You know the person who made these welds and uh, um, just all of that you know who were they it was a long time ago and uh, that's the seat in that one um, it builds like everything else so um, this is a quick build RV which is um, just in the process of coming into the shop here and uh, I'm not completely familiar with uh, what version of the uh, RV it is I just know that it happens to be a quick build under this black tarp back here is one of those facet mobile um, and it's not really in uh, Super, like it's not in flyable condition you can see on the nose here there's some foam foam and stringer work happening and I don't know if it's repairs or anything like that I don't know the the specifics on it except that it's a really big airplane so um, this is a glass air uh, over here in this corner and she appears to be missing a cylinder and I don't know the disposition of this glass air either but it uh, uh, certainly uh, certainly looks like it was a pretty slick airplane at one time um, hopefully whoever's working on it is going to get this thing back in shape and get her back in the air um, I think those are really beautiful airplanes uh, let's see um, up in the front you've already seen uh, you've already seen Gus's uh, Gus's plane here his glass star uh, we went flying in that of course uh, and uh, he keeps that over here by my setup and this is a Mooney. Uh, really, I like this color. Uh, this, this color of Mooney. It's really cool. You, uh, this gentleman flies frequently. And uh, I was trying to see if there's a data plate. I was curious what year it is. I watch my head there. Anyway, it's a beautiful uh, Mooney. What's in here? There's some other things buried in the back that I can't get to, and I'm not quite sure what they are. But uh, this is a... Uh, um, it's a good day. I mean, uh, getting the second coat on the outside of one side, getting the inside completely, uh, completely one-coated is awesome um so yeah thanks for hanging out with me and uh hey as always i will catch you later <laughs>